Richter's relationship to drawing was always very ambivalent, probably because he was in the beginning an academic painter. In his studies in Dresden at the Academy, drawing was always in the service of painting, and it was not an autonomous discipline. But when he came to the West in 1962 and started again, drawing, obviously, in this new art world, had another status. And when he did his first photo paintings, it was obvious that he didn't need studies to prepare them. They were done from scratch, from photographs. This work on paper is at the beginning of Richter's photo paintings. In early 1963, he discovered that you could work on images from magazines by using a solvent and then smudging the image and transforming it from a photo into an informal abstract painting. He cut out several images from Domus magazine, an Italian architecture and design magazine, and used these daily objects, tables or chairs, etc., for working them over. Here are two images where one is almost destroyed, the other one still legible. And he used one of the same type of image for table, his first abstract photo painting. They also transformed the, the model and then repainted it on canvas. Richter also uses machines for drawing, like a drilling machine in which he inserts a pencil in order to create uncontrolled movements on the paper. The 1960s are internationally the time of the project drawings, and so it's no surprise that we have such works by Richter also. These are projects for rooms. Maybe they were not ever created, but the rooms are imaginary. There's one room articulated by columns, illusionary elements which he places in the depth of the space, and another a room with rolled up paintings, paintings which are covering the walls entirely to, to the corners. And we shouldn't forget that Richter was not only a creator of images, of paintings, but that he often was thinking in rooms, the totality of a room created by images. This idea of a totalitary painting is something which haunts him in this period. These works allow us to follow Richter's practice while doing photo painting. He first projects the photo on the canvas and then draws the outlines and paints it out in grey. Here he first does a squaring of the canvas to create an order. He then draws the image of Günter Uecker, his studio neighbor and fellow artist friend. And then he adds a few smudges of grey paint to try out the oil paint. But what is significant is the way he portraits Uecker. He doesn't portray him frontally, he shows him with his head turned off prefiguring the famous portrait of his daughter Betty. And thus here, an unachieved painting and the head turned away, this kind of refusal in a way makes it interesting. In the late 1970s, Richter started thinking about abstract painting like as a counterpart to the photo paintings which he had been doing before. And he asked himself, what is an abstract painting? And he was very critical against all the known forms of abstract painting like a balanced composition or a gestural painting or an expressive uh, painting. All these looked quite ridiculous to him. So the question was what to do, and in this study, in an exemplary way, 
he shows a model of how to develop an abstract painting. He had done a few paintings by enlarging drawings or watercolors and then just repainting them in a, in a large size and thus modifying and changing them. And here he starts with a situation with an illusionist, uh, illusionistic space and he adds various elements to this uh, first sketch, geometrical elements, columns, illusionistic elements, and finally he uses color to intervene and to modify the situation. You can follow step by step Richter's thinking about what an abstract painting could be. And in the end you have a few solutions and he chooses one of them and enlarges it and paints it on a canvas and then reworks it with paint. But he needs this basis because this is a logical, consequential way of developing something which is far from any improvisation, from any gestural expression which he always has denied. In this gallery we have various types of drawing by Richter. It starts with a 1969 study for the sea paintings it's not a study for paintings, it's more a study for systematically developing that idea and it gives an insight into Richter's methodical way of developing his work. Then we have two of the first abstract drawings which go from writing, signing, dating the paper into a gestural, expressive way of working on this paper. In the late 80s and in the 90s, Richter has various types of drawing which he wants to present on a sheet in a way very analytically first but more and more these techniques come together and some kind of landscape effect results. The landscape is not something which is there before. Uh, there is no illustrating of a landscape. The effect, what we call, call a Stimmung in German, results from drawing. It's a secondary effect. It's not uh, what was in his mind before. The ink drawing from 1991 is a very special sheet. It is like analogy to the watercolors which Richter did at the time. Now it's in black and white and he tries to work with the effects of the ink on paper. The ink flows on the paper, there are accidents, there are effects which cannot be foreseen and he works with them and tries to correct them or let them just go. It is a very fairy tale effect which results in the end and I don't say this just by incident because a few years later he does the series Snow White where he overworks an offset print first in white paint and then he draws on the white paint very fine lines and with this uh, Snow White he refers to a very German fairy tale tradition the Grimm brothers and in a way I would say not by chance the German surrealist Max Ernst comes to mind because in the 20s he loved to develop various techniques to profit from the effects of chance in his works and to develop what was really unseen before. The mirror as a reality and as the ultimate picture has always accompanied Richter's thinking over the decades of his work. And the ultimate mirror is a polished steel ball because the polished steel ball would reflect anything which is visible around it. And in 1991, when he was doing lots of watercolors, he interrupted the flow of watercolors and as a counterpart did a series of 12 figurative ink drawings representing the steel ball. Richter always liked to, do, to work on contraries, to do one thing and to do the contrary. And when he did the abstract watercolors, it was interesting for him to do exactly what this, what this was not, namely to do a figurative ink drawing. And so he puts the steel ball like on a stage. It is there with a background, with a, it lies there ready to roll around and to reflect the world.
but mostly his drawing begins again in the 1980s when he starts the abstract painting, when he's really high or the high wave of his abstract painting. And the drawings are in a way analogies to the abstract paintings, but obviously drawings are always different from painting. And so Richter in a way makes available different ways of articulating a sheet of paper while drawing. And this is his way of doing abstract drawings at that time. In the 90s, in the 2000s, he stops drawing mostly, but then in the last years when he gave up painting, when he officially said in 2017, this is my last painting, he returned to drawing because this was this activity which remained for him and it was a kind of solution to mourn the disappearance of painting and to find a new way of expressing himself, like doodling, like sketching, and doing these very loose studies which more and more became finished drawings.